Sweden officially joined NATO as a full member this week, following Finland's example. And that means that the northern perspective on all military matters will feature more prominently in the Western Military Alliance from now on as well. And other countries might be able to learn a lesson or two from these Nordic countries. And what does that mean for support of Ukraine? The German defence minister is currently travelling Scandinavia. He's in Finland at the moment. And travelling with him is Johannes Ald from the Social Democrats, a member of the German Bundestag, the parliament. You're a soldier yourself. You're from the same party as the German defence minister. So what will change concretely, in concrete terms, now that Sweden has officially joined NATO? At first, it's a very good news that Sweden finally could join NATO alongside Finland, where we are tonight. Um, I think the look on the military geography will change completely out of two reasons. At first, we have now the Baltic Sea as a almost sole NATO um, uh, ocean. And the other point is also that uh, the geography um, alongside Norway, that we have a bigger depth in the uh, Nordic part of Europe that we have to defend. We have uh, longer borders uh, to, to Russia, this changes a lot and uh, gives another strategic um, view on Northern Europe. And when it comes to the Northern mindset, we've noticed here, traveling Scandinavia, that um, the perspective, especially by young people, when it comes to defending their country, is quite different to what it's like in Germany. If Can you tell us a bit about that mindset? You served yourself in Sweden for a while. In Sweden, security is part of the public debate. This you see that you have two conferences every year where parties just discuss about security for a week in public. So it's exchange. You have a lot of organizations that contribute to the defense of their country. This is in, they have in Sweden and Finland, and as we also learned now, they have a very strong Norwegian defense. Um, they have a culture where everybody wants to contribute to the total defense system. That's a very comprehensive view on security that does, does not just include military security, but also um, civilian defense, also the economy that has to contribute to this, uh, to this uh, matter. And um, people are willing, and the Swedes and the Norwegians made it turn conscription service to an IT article. So it's actually quite just cool to serve in the armed forces. And this is quite different from Germany right now. And this is something that the German defense minister has said repeatedly on this trip, that he thinks Germany should have a proper debate about how to recruit more young people and the right people for the German armed forces that young people have to give something back to their country. Where are we standing when it comes to that German discussion? If you could just sum that up, because, of course, conscription, um, obligatory uh, conscription, was paused in 2011. In my personal program, I went to election uh, with uh, introducing a national service, so one year for every young man, every young woman of choice, from uh, development, work, uh, schools, kindergarten, hospitals, to uh, military service. That's not the position of my party by now, but my personal position and also locally supported by the party. But what we now need is a debate that um, the service of young men and women is needed in Germany. It's clear that a new form of conscription will not just include men. That means we have to change our constitution. And we have to discuss if a Nordic form of uh, conscription, that means that we just take a very... Uh, minor percentage of an annual uh, group of young men and women um, take into the conscription and just choose the best or if, it, if you take all young men and women that live in Germany into a kind of national service. This we have to discuss, this debate we should, uh, should take a few months, but I think we have decided in, uh, in the very short future because it takes years to build up the service and the system to take all this uh, young men and women in our system in the civil defense and the military defense. What you just mentioned about changing the constitution, that would of course be required if you wanted to include women. This is of course something where this model would not work in the year 2024 or 25 if you only had it for men, just to specify again why the change of the constitution would be necessary. What is it that makes these countries high up here in the north so aware that they need to be able to defend their own country when talking to young people in Germany you get the feeling it's very far away that there is potentially a threat? Especially Sweden and Finland had a 
200 year old tradition of being politically neutral or don't have any military alliances at least. So that means that they had to depend on their own, they had to trust on their own, and they knew they would stand alone in case of a defense, in case of a war. And this uh, transformed a whole society and formed a strategic culture where it's clear that you have to defend your country, that you have to contribute if the liberal values and the, the, the right to choose yourself how you want to live um, if you want to defend this. And this idea, together with probably the approach to take young men and women serious and making conscription an it article also in Germany, this we should inhale, uh, breathe deep and take into the German discussion and I hope we will succeed. But there are people who are saying it's essentially also an infringement on people's individual freedoms if you tell them we're going to tell you what you have to do when you're 18. How do you counteract these arguments that other people might want to start a civilian career? Absolutely. When I was 18 years, I was also against conscription and I was mostly also forced to join the army. But that's not the argument I want to bring up. Um, I want to say that if you want to live your free life to make your choices in a liberal democracy, then you have to contribute because we see now that we are living in a world that's more and more insecure. We have more and more authoritarian governments and uh, dictatorships that don't want that you have the right to choose yourself. So if you want to defend the liberal democracy, it's up to you to contribute. And uh, therefore, we probably also have to ask people that did not have the idea in the first place to serve, to serve for the country. Now, the defense minister also witnessed part of that big training exercise where 20,000 soldiers from 13 nations are currently practicing in the Nordic response NATO maneuver and um, how to launch a counteroffensive, basically, in an assumed scenario where there would have been an invasion from the east. Um, do you think that with Russia's invasion into Ukraine two years ago, these maneuvers have changed in their significance at all? Um, I think in the last five to seven years after the occupation of Crimea, we have seen that these uh, maneuvers have grown. And sure, the significance and the seriousness, uh, the preparation of the maneuvers has changed, also the inclusion of uh, civilian parts and other parts. And as we see, it's important to have a very good and comprehensive defense planning. So our German mountaineers that are contributing to the Norwegian Land Brigade are a capability gap that Germany fills for Norway in this mountainous terrain. And so it's very welcomed and it's a very good military policy issue to contribute for NATO allies in this uh, hard and harsh environment. One takeout I had today, we could see that New equipment uh, was, uh, has arrived, uh, soldiers were happy with their new equipment and um, they were very professional and it was a very uh, great honor to see them uh, operating and doing their business. Yeah, but speaking of equipment, they also had to use Norwegian equipment because they don't have their own ski so they can't travel with the snowmobiles uh, that the German Bundeswehr would provide. So Germany is not quite yet equipped for a scenario like this. When will that change? Uh, I think we have a minister that, uh, that likes to take decisions and like to take quick decisions. In the German parliament, we have seen the number of procurement decisions has grown from 25 in 2022 uh, in the last year to 55. And this year it will be more than 100 decisions we take. And uh, I think the minister will take the, all these notes uh, that we that he took, that he took today uh, in this exercise and that he'll evaluate with his staff and most probably we'll also have a decision to equip the mountaineers with the Skido things. Um, we have to adjust and it's very important to take new technology and the best technology in that we can also dominate the area. How long do you think, Mr. Ald, is it possible for NATO countries to maintain that balance try and deliver vitally needed equipment to Ukraine as much as possible because all the allies say we need to support Ukraine for as long as it takes and at the same time boost up their own defense capabilities. How much longer can these countries actually have the support from their own populations? Do you, do you feel like there's some sort of a war fatigue um, it's very important uh, that we don't uh, continue as we've done for the last two years. We have to and we will support Ukraine and it's very important for our free world. But what we have to do is to boost up the defense industry. I'm responsible for this matter in the 
business committee also it's important that we develop the finance instruments to give the industry the guarantee that we'll buy for 10 15 years that is possible to to also increase the production level of all military equipment and especially ammunition and this is actually what's also needed in ukraine ammunition especially for artillery so that will contribute to our security and to the security of ukraine now, I can't let you go without addressing the Russian spying scandal story, of course, where R Russia intercepted a conversation between German officials um, that were discussing the delivery of Taurus cruise missiles to Ukraine. And Boris Pistorius, the German defense minister, maintains that allies have not lost trust in Germany. But what needs to happen so that Germany can prove that it is a reliable partner? Germany is a reliable partner. The Swedish defense minister, the Norwegian defense minister outlined this also to the media. Um, we have here the discussion of an individual mistake that has been made during a business travel in applying a security app. And I think uh, everybody can make a mistake. I did mistakes in my life, also as soldiers, as officers. And I think that we should also be able to forgive this. And uh, important is now that we develop finance instruments for boosting the defense industry to produce the ammunition that Ukraine needs, because otherwise they cannot continue with the war against Russia and they cannot defend their country and succeed in the end. Johannes Ald from the SPD, the Social Democrats. Thank you very much.